Good morning. My name is Chris Adam of You've Played for Employers. And I'm delighted to be joined by Josh, a co-founder from Trek Films. Hello there, Josh. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Yes, I'm not too bad. Yourself? Good, thanks. Fantastic. Well, thank you for finding the time to speak to me this morning. And I guess my first question really has to be, can you tell me about Trek Films and what it is you do? Yeah, so Trek Films is a video production agency. We're based in Norwich. We sort of work all over we work all over Norwich, we work all over the country, and occasionally we get to travel overseas as well. Um, we work a lot producing corporate videos for different businesses of different sizes. Um, we've also produced a lot of TV commercials that have played on ITV and have played on uh, Sky. Um, and uh, everything we do has a sort of cinematic edge. So even though we're producing content in the corporate video world or the commercial video world, everything we do has like a cinematic edge to it. We almost treat it like a short film and, and, and you know, storyboard it and, and there's sort of a beginning, middle, end. It's not sort of like buy one, get one free content. It's it's almost the sort of John Lewis type footage, even if we're doing it for, you know, a corporate client. We always try and add a, a cinematic edge to it, really. And if we had to, I'm not, I'm not expecting you to reveal any client names or anything like that, but if we had to maybe explore the process. So imagine a corporate client comes to, with, um, comes to you with a brief and says, you know, this is the kind of thing we're thinking of. What can you do? How does that process go from, as you say, from the original approach by the client to it, you know, airing, you know, where, 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 on whatever platform it's going to air. Yeah, it varies. I mean, the best kind of briefs you get from clients are the ones where there's like a, there's like a scaffolding of an idea that you can build on. Like these are the messages they want to get across, but they don't necessarily know how to communicate them. So it's it's quite exciting for us during that sort of early conception stage to be like, okay, we know the messages you want to get across. Here's the best way to put those into like a cinematic, engaging story. The more difficult projects are the ones where the clients are like this, this shot, this shot, that shot, and and sometimes we might we might not necessarily follow up on those because we don't necessarily think we have too much to offer. So and it becomes about being and filmmaking is about sort of decent collaboration, and that's not just sort of like writer, director, and camera people. That is often our collaboration with the client, and when we're all on the same page about what the project is and they know what messages they want to get across, they know their business and they know their branding. Um, then if they can trust us to do the video side of it, then that, that gels really well. And it's always like a decent product at the end of it when that happens, basically. Does that answer that question? Sorry. Yeah, no, no it, it does indeed. And I find it very interesting. And actually sort of what kind of other sort of, other than directly with the client, what other kinds of people and organizations are you collaborating with as a, whether it is for that particular client or as part of the day-to-day -day running of the business? We're very small business, so actually a lot of the time there's not a huge amount of, of, of people we're dealing with. A lot of times it is sort of client relationships, which is quite important to us. Um, but and because the business at its core is just two people, but often what we do, if we're shooting a TV commercial, we'll, we'll expand to build a team for that one particular project. So we don't necessarily have um, makeup artists or storyboard artists working for us full time, but when a project calls for it, we'll, we'll bring them in. And same with like camera assistants and, and that kind of thing. Um, in terms of like other people we're, we're chatting to, often we kind of, if we're doing a TV commercial, we have to keep up communication with uh, the broadcaster, whoever's dealing with the airtime. So there's sometimes people like that involved. And often some of our clients are agencies who are pro who we're working with with another client, if that makes sense. So we might be working with a media agency who's working with, say, um, Sainsbury's, for example. So we'll have to deal with the agency who is our first point of contact and also communicate with their client who's, who's say, Sainsbury's or another company like that. It becomes really clear in what you're saying that, you know, with, with, within this sector that communication and creativity are very clear skills that are, are required. Uh, are there yeah. any other sort of soft skills that actually are really important to work in the sector that maybe we haven't touched on yet? I think that the main thing I think is important, if you, especially if you sort of like entry level of it is is to have a portfolio of work is the main thing that's going to be able to open doors for you because we, we kind of get a lot of um, CVs emailed to us and CVs are obviously important for whenever you're applying to a job. But when it's something that's so visual and something that's so creative and you're producing content, you need to be able to show that you can actually produce what you sort of wanted to say you can do, if that makes sense. So I think being able to build a portfolio for yourself and be able to build like a name for yourself a little bit. And it doesn't necessarily have to be over the top, but just so like if you reach out to someone and say, I want to work with you, I want to do this kind of piece of content for you that you don't have. If you have nothing to your name, like not even like one video, then you kind of why would they trust you? So just building up your own little name for yourself in terms of the kind of work you want to produce is is always a good way to start, I think. And if we explore the concept of that portfolio a little bit more, actually, because that goes into the question I was going to ask you next, actually, how do I put it? Everyone's got access to, you know, the, you 
know to a smartphone nowadays everyone can you know video things that are pretty decent quality you know a lot of times you know there are a lot of people out there who probably think like oh you know i've got some you know um you know video recording editing skills because of you know these things i'm doing in my spare time what separates how do i put it you know a casual person's portfolio from a you know someone who as you say is wanting to make a name for themselves wants to be serious in the industry's portfolio what kind of things should they be doing to differentiate themselves so someone that wants to do it as a hobby versus someone wants to actually take it seriously and do it yes. for free. Yeah, I think that's just like um, rinse and repeat, really, because um, I don't really think, you know, with, with, that, with where technology is right now, I don't really think that's an obstacle anymore. And obviously to a point, you know, if you, don't, if you aren't able to sort of have a smartphone, that's understandable. But if you do have a smartphone in your pocket, then that's kind of all you need to start with, really. And so it's just about creating content again and again and building up your skills it's just about like anything you have to kind of practice it so many times to get good at it and the more you do the better and the other way to sort of improve that portfolio and improve your skills in in, the, in that sector is to absorb content as well so look at tv commercials but also look at films and don't just look at what the latest sort of blockbuster is look at some sort of more niche films as well just kind of absorb everything you can and it'll help you sort of find what interests you as well but the main thing is to keep to keep just producing content again and again until because you're going to be not very good for a while and you kind of have to keep to get through that by just producing content and then each time you'll get better and better but yeah the the, the technology and the equipment thing is 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 sort of like not really an obstacle as it was say even 10 years ago because of just the, the power and the, the sort of accessibility of stuff like our, our equipment we do have like a decent sort of pool of equipment um but it didn't cost us a huge amount of money um all, all things considered um, and also it's about, you know, it's, it's, it's how you use those tools, because we often get asked sometimes uh, if we show like a piece of work or something, oh, what camera did you shoot it on? As if the camera sort of dictated the quality of it, but that's not necessarily mm -hmm. the case. I mean, sometimes you might make a creative choice to use a certain camera or a certain lens and put a light in a certain place, but it's not, the film doesn't look like that because we went and used a certain camera. It's, it's how we chose to use it. So it's the same whether you're using an iPhone or something like that. And you can see impressive stuff that's been filmed on iPhone. So it's it's a, an accessible thing in that sense the you paint a great image of variety within sort of um you know within this sector and you know i will yeah words <laughs> i would prefix this by saying that i noticed there's no such thing as a typical day it doesn't exist in any in any sector any industry any any job role but if you were to maybe take me through sort of what some of the kind of different days look like you know um within the organization what would they look like yeah well i guess as you said there is no typical day but if i was to split it in two we have location-based days and office-based days so we have um, i'm at home right now but we have an office in central norwich which is sort of our hub for like meetings and editing and where we store all our equipment and you know the cupboard needs to sort out right now but that's our sort <laughs> of thing so everything that happens uh in in the office is going to be like us talking through ideas us meeting with clients whether that's through like zoom or, or um actual meeting uh, all of our editing we've got a few imax in there happens there and, and any sort of the post-production side of stuff happens there as well um and a lot of times as well that's just the business development side of things so often if we're, if we're sitting at a desk we're looking at who our current clients are and who we can be reaching out to next and uh anything we can do in terms of our branding and and just taking a sort of step back and looking at the business as a whole we kind of do from there as well uh, obviously what makes up a lot of our job and what we actually do is is filming so a lot of the days we're actually out on location shooting stuff and that could be literally anywhere and, and shooting a variety of content as well so that might be something that's a tv commercial or more or more of a short film um or it could be uh you know something that's maybe more talking head based with, with sort of b-roll that's that's a little more corporate um and i guess another big thing that kind of we have to put a bit of time into is is the pitching process as well and that and that that's normally something that me and Matty, who's I run the business with, sort of do together to come up with the concept and, and we pitch together as well, which is sort of a, always sometimes works as a strength too. And as, as I say, sort of just touching back to something we, we said, I say we've established that, and even as part of the pitching process, that communication yeah. is is really sort of, you know, an important skill to work in this sector. And if we just go back to when we were talking about, as I say, sort of, you know, the, the lots of the CVs you get of young people wanting to be, um, sort of I say in the industry and we've touched on the you know the the portfolios and the sort of the technical yeah. side of things you know what kind of experiences or what would you advise you know would be useful in the sector in terms of you know should a young person maybe have gone and got a part-time job you know getting some sort of 
customer service skills, building rapport, all those kind of things. Should they be joining a club? What other kind of things have you found or maybe seen on TV that you think actually, you know, that would help you with those more personal communication skills that would help you succeed in the sector? Yeah, I'm not actually sure. I mean, I think that they're obviously they're obviously important, but I think that would be the case sort of within within any job. And I do think having some experience in uh you know any sort of whether we can if you're at a college level or even sort of university level or high school level but having some sort of part-time job just to kind of yeah have an experience of actually being in a work environment is is really good i mean even even today i have sort of imposter syndrome with running trek films but i wouldn't have been able to do it when i was uh 16 for example because i needed to be able to do a certain other jobs beforehand and and have that sort of life experience also have that work experience in, the, in order to navigate uh, a business i think and that's not exclusive for everyone but for in my personal sort of trajectory, I, I think you kind of do have to work, work some jobs to be able to build up those kind of skills of, of socially and, and professional as well. Um, and it just sort of helps you understand how the world of the work works, world of work works a little more. <laughs> yeah. That leads me quite nicely onto my last question, actually, because you touched on there about sort of some of the things you, you've learned, and as you say, sort of, you know, you know, you as your younger self realised the kind of things you needed to learn to get to this position. And I've asked all the employers I've done um, this employer talks with this question, which is if you could actually go back now and speak to say 16, 17 year old Josh, you know, as I say, about to sort of take steps out on your career journey, um, you know, take into account sort of mistakes you've made and learned from successes you've had. What is the one piece of career advice you'd go back and give your younger self? Uh, do I have to pick one? <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if, if you've got a couple, I can stretch to a couple. <laughs> yeah. Depends which age of myself I'm going back to, but I think I think one piece of advice and I think I did do this but it would just be a reminder is to not sort of take your finger off the button like the, I, when I started off doing filmmaking a lot of my friends were doing it at the same time and, and sort of one boy one by one they sort of dropped off because it wasn't like an immediate there's not an immediate job role in it if that makes sense but I kind of mm. kept at it one way or another and that and that paid off and I think that's everyone's career is going to look different there's no like formula to like you can't get to this place because this person you can't like follow their exact route so the main thing is like just keep at it and and, and one way or another it, it will work out it's just not necessarily going to be in the exact way you expect it to and it's not necessarily going to be on the timeline you expect it to and i think somewhere along the lines i i sort of realized that and, and took comfort in that a little bit because there's so much other things to stress about so <laughs>